no grief, no care, no toil. That is the church hymn. It's called Materna. It is written by Samuel Augustus Ward, and you're probably more familiar with that melody as the melody from America the Beautiful. Hi, we're Robin and the Giant. Welcome to Notables, the well-sung heroes of songwriting. And today we are focusing on lyricist Catherine Lee Bates and composer Samuel Augustus Ward. The song America the Beautiful was written by Catherine Lee Bates and Samuel Augustus Ward, although the two never met each other. The music written by Ward was originally the tune he composed for a church hymn titled Materna. Samuel Ward was born on December 28, 1848, in Newark, New Jersey. He started playing the accordion when he was six years old, and by the time he was 16, he was an organist at a church in New York City. Later, he owned a music store, played the organ at Grace Episcopal Church in Newark, and composed music. Catherine Lee Bates was born on August the 12th, 1859, in Falmouth, Massachusetts. Catherine was the fifth child of William and Cornelia Francis Lee Bates. Her father was pastor of the First Congregational Church. She graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree from Wellesley College in 1880. From 1880 to 1925, Bates taught at Wellesley College as a professor of English literature. She also studied at Oxford and earned a master's degree in arts from Wellesley. Samuel Ward wrote the melody for Materna in 1882 on his way home from a trip to Coney Island, which is an amusement park at a beach in Brooklyn, New York. The tune, he said, just popped into his head as he stood riding on the boat back to Newark. Unfortunately, he never got to hear his melody used for America the Beautiful. The words and melody were first joined in November of 1904, and Samuel died in September, on September 28th of 1903. Catherine Bates was a noted scholar, poet, and writer. She was a prolific author, publishing many volumes of poetry, books on her travels to Europe and the Middle East, and stories, verses, and plays for children. She also published several books on Shakespeare and pre-Shakespearean English religious drama. Catherine Lee Bates was the first known writer to introduce Mrs. Santa Claus to the American scene in the book Goody Santa Claus on a Sleigh Ride, published in 1889. And by the way, a, a little side note, the word goody was a common contraction of the day for good wife. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> was that the best picture that you could find for Mrs. Claus? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was the best one. <laughs> anyway, it was during that year, 1889, that she had suffered from the grip and was on convalescent leave. And during that time, she wrote a large amount of children's literature and poetry. She spent 1889 and 1890 at Oxford. Returning, she felt that as a full professor, she should not concern herself with juvenile literature anymore. But by 1909, her position had softened, and she again included children's literature among her output. Later, she would write other poems for children about Christmas. Catherine Bates recalled looking at the view of the Rockies from Pikes Peak during a visit in 1893. And as she was looking out over the sea-like expanse of fertile country spreading away so far under those ample skies that the opening lines of the hymn floated into her mind. By the time she left Colorado Springs, the four stanzas were penciled in her notebook together with other memoranda in verse and prose of the trip. Two summers later, she sent that poem to a newspaper called The Congregationalist, where the poem first appeared in print July 4, 1895. The hymn attracted an unexpected amount of attention. It was almost at once set to music by a composer by the name of Silas G. Pratt. Other tunes were also written for the same words, and many requests came that in 1904, she actually rewrote the words, trying to make the phraseology more simple and direct. In addition to simplifying the phrasing and text, Bates made one change in the wording of the third stanza, adding, for the first time, the word beautiful. The new version was published in the Boston Evening Transcript on November 19, 1904. While the poem was sung with a variety of tunes, it is almost exclusively adapted Samuel A. Ward's Materna 
as its melody. Bates remarked on the immediate and lasting success of the song, stating, quote, that the hymn has gained such a hold as it has upon our people. It is clearly due to the fact that Americans are at heart idealists with a fundamental faith in human brotherhood. Catherine's original manuscript was sold at auction on March 5th, 2009 for $22,705. Bates and Ward were both inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 1970, and that is why they are featured in Notables, the well-sung heroes of songwriting. And we'll just end with the more familiar version of America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of green. Purple mountains, majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed His grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea. Shining sea.